Well, hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessica Likewise. I'm studying for our BCBA exam, and as I'm doing so, I'm making videos for you so you can study along with me. Today, we're gonna discuss the two features of behavior and two assumptions that behavior analysts make about behavior when doing ABA. <music> Well, hey guys, and welcome back. Again, as I said, today we're gonna to discuss the assumptions and features of behavior in behavior analysis. So what distinguishes us as ABA therapists is that we make the following assumptions about behavior, which are different than people in other, even behavioral psychological fields make. So the first feature of a behavior in ABA is that behavior is individual. Even in a group, it is individuals within that group that act and have a behavior, not the group that has a behavior. So in ABA, all behavior is individual. The other thing that we believe is that all behavior is continuous, which means it's constantly changing over time. We see this all the time with our, our clients, right, as therapists. Maybe a child will engage in a hand flapping for a short period of time, and, and that time and in that moment, it may seem really intense and all encompassing, but maybe it only happens for a month or two. And in the grand scheme of things, looking back over a five year period, we realized that behavior very quickly went away, right? So it's really hard to give a real concrete measure of a behavior because really behavior is just sampling what it looks like in any given time, but behavior is always changing. So that is really important to know when doing ABA therapy. The other thing that's really important and sets us apart, which is this is different than most other behavioral fields, it's certainly different than um, Freud's version of psychology, is that we believe that behavior is determined. So what does that mean? A person doesn't exhibit behavior because they're making a choice to do so. They're exhibiting behavior because of the functional relationships that they have with environmental stimulus. So it is the environmental stimulus that's provoking a behavior, not a person's rational decision and choice in the moment to engage in a behavior. That's why we believe that by manipulating the environment, we can make a behavior occur more or less often. And when a behavior is variable, so unlike, again, other forms of psychology that might believe it's just a person is making a different choice in a different moment, we believe that behavioral variability occurs because of in extraneous factors in the environment, right? We call these, in an, in an intervention phase, this would be called confounding variables. But the fact that things vary in the environment all the time that is what changes the behavior. So it could be a lack of sleep, it could be not feeling well, it could be a crowd, it could be um, a, the presence of something in the environment, maybe a child's afraid of a dog and there's a dog walking um, down the street and that causes the child to engage in the behavior, right? So we believe that all behavior is determined by the environment. So these are important, you know, when studying ABA to, have, to know that we make these, that these are the distinguishing features of behavior in ABA and that we make those assumptions because it's critical to our ability to change a behavior using ABA therapy. So I hope you found this video helpful. I'm going to be making more videos just like this. Subscribe to the channel. Also, there's accompanying study notes that go with every one of these videos. They're just my study notes. They're not formal blog posts, but they are posted on my blog hopeeducationservices.com. Check them out and I'll see you in the next video.